Hello everyone, we're going to jump straight into this tutorial. I'm Tabitha Scott Nails, I'm a professional licensed nail tech, and I'm just showing you me working on a regular client. Well, this is my mother, she's a client, this is a regular process. So I started off by filing down her previous design. I'm using the speedy bit for my elegance, and I like to use that bit at about at least 26,000 RPMs. It's an aggressive bit. I like to use it at a high speed. So once we file down um, our previous design that we had, then we're going to start off with prep. And I like to use the cutie patootie bit just to I always say to open everything up. It pushes back that live skin and starts to buff um, the edge of that skin because there's diamond burrs on the top of that bit. So we get some nice exfoliation there. Um, after that, I like to go in with the itty bitty bit and it's a much more narrow bit. Um, a smaller bit and that bit is going to kind of detail and get in the nice crevices so this bit right now that you can see is the itty bitty bit and I can get into those side walls and more tightly fit into that cuticle area I like to use this bit in both the forward and the reverse direction as a right-handed person that means I'm going from the left side of the nail over to the right as you can see and I like to use this bit in both directions just because we're able to approach that skin and those angles just from different directions with the e-file spinning different ways we can exfoliate that dead skin we want to get off a little better so this bit i'm also using in reverse i generally do i don't know it feels more comfortable for me um, but a lot of times i'll use it both ways but majority it is in reverse so i'm just using this to buff as much of that dead skin off of her live skin as um as i can um, we don't want to make it feel uncomfortable or overwork the skin i didn't want to do any nipping on her so i'm applying tack i cleanse the nails off i use pro cleanser then i'm applying tack and tack is from light elegance so we cured that and now i'm fixing this piece of this nail and i'm using light elegance's fiber gel and the natural color and you can see i'm just kind of floating that gel in that area and flash curing it with a little led flashlight um just to fix that area um my mother had some of her natural nail was pulling away from the enhancement so i filed that down to make sure we didn't have that separation in air pocket um and when it curls up sometimes you can get it caught on things so she had a little gash of the nail flipping up underneath so it's drama but that's how i like to fix it fiber is great for doing those patches and repairs um so just floating that product it's a go-to i do sometimes if it's a little area that needs to be fixed it's a little quicker you don't have to put a whole form on and everything like that especially when we get the nails this long forms can be very difficult to fit properly because we have curves and twists and turns so i'm using cashmere extreme and i'm applying a slip layer first as always a slip layer please make it really thin apply it as clean as possible it is my recommendation there's different ways to successfully apply gel if you want to know what i kind of look for and what i go for when i'm applying and how i like to recommend it is a very thin slip layer first you live that layer wet and then we're going to take the bigger beta product as you can see and then we'll use this um then we'll go and manipulate this so i'm doing a refill she doesn't have a ton to kind of rebuild and rebalance we're touching the live skin so if we do we can wipe that off quickly and bring that product towards the center of the nail remember your gel if it self levels it's it's moving always so keep that in mind the thinner the product is the faster it's going to self level and potentially run cashmere extreme is more of a medium to thicker viscosity gel so it doesn't um, run that quick that easily um, but we want to monitor and be mindful of the the product and kind of watch it as we're working with it i always say kind of you know keep a lookout at that cuticle area like you would your rear view mirror in the car you just kind of glance up sometimes and and check it out and make sure it's doing good so as we move down the nail keep up with your cuticle area and around your side walls because the product is more difficult to clean up and get together once we start running and we get it into the side walls um, if it does happen it's not the end of the world um, but to kind of keep with that timing inconvenience so once we get that cured and the tacky layer cleansed off, I begin my filing and shaping process. And I'm using the perfect file and I like to use that 100 grit side uh, for the most part with shaping. I'll do any like fine detailing with the 
um, the lesser grit, the 180 grit. So you can see I'm showing you guys just a little sneak peek. You know, I hardly share any type of shaping, but I always slip the hand. It looks a little weird. I'm trying to just the perspective of the camera. The nails are facing me. So you're kind of seeing this um, from the right side. You know what I mean? Of the nail because I'm looking pretty much kind of straight on with her hand. So you can see I flip the hand and I use the file in both directions, kind of forward and backwards. And I come over onto the surface of the nail slightly. When I'm filing the free edge, we want to make sure we bring that file a little bit at a downward angle to give us a nice, clean, straight edge instead of a curved edge. So I started to finish filing with a more traditional carbide bit and I like to finish it up with a shaper bit it's a diamond cross cut bit and I like to use this just to do all the fine detailing this leaves a nice buff surface it helps me taper in the cuticle area to get it nice and flush we can go and clean under the nail um, as well along with over the entirety of the surface as I mentioned to leave a nice buff surface we want that roughness on the surface of the nail there's difference in lumps and bumps and texture or etching the surface of the nail we want the nail to not have all these hills and valleys but then we want the actual surface to be a little rough so our gel can hold on to the product if that roughness gets in the way of your design you can always apply a layer of like matte top coat if you're going in with nail art as we're doing. Again, if the ridges leave too much texture, you can go in with a little bit finer grit of a, f a file, I mean of a buffer, um, but we don't want that too smooth. So now I'm starting my design. We kind of blended some inspiration to create this design. So it's a half wrench. And we wanted that French to be a little bit higher if it was to be like, if you drew both sides of the French, it's a little more traditional than I would normally do on a French. I just default go to a real deep French if a client asks for a French. Um, so you can see I kind of put the nails up next to each other. We want to make sure they're looking like sisters. They may not be identical, but we want to make sure they're closely related. So comparing those nails, especially when you get to that pointer middle ring finger, um, kind of making sure we line them up to give them relatively similar so you can see i start off with these with frenches i can go at every single nail differently you guys <laughs> um but one main theme is that i like to make sure we start off usually with a detail line or initial line to get that French going and, and mark it. So I went ahead and applied two layers of the white. I didn't want to bore you with the second layer. Then I'm using my block brush and my block brush has been through. So it has a little bit of a haphazard. <laughs> the bristles are a little wacky and I did that. It's not the brush's fault. So I'm taking my colors and I'm dry brushing them over the white and I am curing in between each layer. So between the peach color, we cured and I just lightly dry brush. And then we went to our teal color, cured, lightly dry brush that on. Now we're into our pink and I'm just lightly dry brushing it on. And when we dabbed into this color, we wanna make sure we had very little product on the brush. And specifically with these colors, I appreciate the order I applied these just because now that pink is sitting on top of that teal and making like a purple color and mixing on top of that peachy color and making like a bit of a coral type color or a bit of an orange, you know? So it's that pink is mixing with both colors nicely. So now I'm taking the fluff brush and you can see I'm putting in that black buttercream and black tie. And you can see how I put product on and then I dabbed it off. That's how I use the block brush as well. I dabbed product on and then I kind of tapped it off. So I, I'm doing some gentle swipes across the surface of this, this design, <laughs> being very careful not to get it on my nude base. And I'm flipping the hand again, you guys. I go to flipping the hand often because you can get to different angles and you can see the nails from a different perspective a different vantage point and i think you can get nail art straighter so i'm flip the hands constantly just to make sure things are balanced or i can access a certain angle so when i took those strokes across horizontally i went ahead and cured so i'm curing in between each layer it's very important with this design um, I think so to cure now I'm going vertically and pulling those um, that line down and again being very careful trying not to get it on the nude we can you know 
buff or file to get it off if we do so but to kind of avoid that i'm being very careful with it um it wasn't too tedious you just got to be intentional with your brush strokes which you should always be please be intentional with your tool know where it's at at all times from the tip of it to the other end whether it's file a brush your e-file you, anything be in tune with your tool so now i'm just pulling vertically like i mentioned down the nail and again when you do this process it's about you know light touches with the brush making sure we have a light amount of product again almost dry brushing and dry brushing is essentially its namesake almost where that brush is literally dry has a little amount of product on it so we get that cured and now we're going to do this outline which is going to kind of make this pop um and you know ties it into the other hand as well even more so because the other hand is going to be more simplistic it's going to be the same design except the half French is black and then we're going to have our detail line in white which is going to be the same on both hands so I'm just outlining this you can see I really wanted to show you guys how I'm taking this just one step at a time curves are hard for me I'm going to be honest that's just my truth so um, I had to take it bit by bit. One tip that has helped me with drawing curves is being able to turn the finger as I draw. So I'm kind of rotating her finger. I'm pulling that brush to the right and rotating her finger ever so slightly to the left. And um, that really helps it out so you have to move less with that brush i don't know what it is especially tight curves this is not so bad really i, I have to be more mindful and intentional but when we start doing like filigree type stuff or we're drawing letters like the letter o <laughs> or a g or a c uh it's yeah so um i'm starting on the other hand like i said this hand is going to be more simplistic we're doing that half french the challenge here is going to make sure it looks like again we look like sisters with the other hand so i will um line up the fingers i'm gonna line up thumb to thumb i didn't catch it on camera um but we'll line up thumb to thumb and just make sure that that vertical line comes up at about the same spot that the line executes at the same spot near the side walls that highest part up and that we get kind of that curve relatively the same and if we bump the nails up to the next to each other you know it, w it won't be precise but we can see you know yeah you you look like what you're supposed to look like so again going back to this other hand and i'm cleaning up this black outline because that point where that vertical line and that curve line meant was a little tricky and i found when i flipped the hand over i could finish that i could use the very tip of the brush to get it in there to make it as clean as possible so i am going in with this kind of same technique well like i said i'm i work a little wacky i'll do some fingers one way do some the other and they're all supposed to look like the same so i'm starting off with this nail and again i'm gonna hold it next to the pointer on the other hand i don't do that necessarily for every nail my pointer and my thumb are kind of my anchor fingers if i know how you want the pointer if i know how you want the thumb as far as like length of things um then i can really work through most of the hand so going back to this hand i'm going in between and you can see just the little detail i'm talking about just that little point making sure we thicken it up when we have lines um, we want to make sure that they are the same width from beginning to end so you can see i'm lining these up just to make sure we're in a good space and then i'm aligning the pointer to the middle finger on the same hand to make sure those look similar and are balanced so i flipped the hand over because i wanted to make sure that line was straight my mom's nails um, twist and turn and curve so that can kind of skew the perspective um, so i like to flip them over like i said i think that gives us the most fair vantage point so i started with that vertical vertical line i came with the horizontal line just to kind of know where i wanted to execute and how high i wanted it kind of based off that pointer finger so then i'm adding my curve and i can tell you right now the ring finger this finger right here i didn't do the curve as um well as i should have it doesn't come in as much as it should have 
it's um notice it during editing <laughs> so and this whole time i'm using the selena ride in stripey brush uh for the straight line details so now i am going and adding that white detail and you can kind of see my frustration a little bit i'm seeing a little bit of that texture with the going over that black line and going over our other kind of tweed detail so it's making the line look like it's bouncing out a little bit and you can see i'm using my thumb just to kind of clean it up to fix the illusion there um and then i flip the hand over again surprise surprise to get that final curve and really this is because i am right-handed and to pull the brush to the left it's more difficult and so if the hand was flipped over i'd have to swing that brush to the left and up that's that's difficult so when we flip the hand over now it's going to the right and as a right-handed person that is going to be more that's going to be easier it's going to come more naturally because it's the way we naturally write we go from left side of the page to the right side so you know what i mean so now i'm able to add this final detail in the corner because it's kind of coming from the left over to the right maybe it's just me but i urge you to try it if you need to make any details that are stroking up the nail or over to the left try flipping the hand over so now i'm going in with the second layer of this black once we add that second layer that pigment is just going to be exactly where it needs to be so i'm just starting off with that outline to make sure it's crisp i'm filling in that top corner just because it's more difficult for this bigger brush to get in there and just swiping that color down i like to start if i'm doing double coats or just in general if i'm doing a design like this i usually make the borderline a little thicker um and when we need to fill it in i can just brush some of that product on the borderline inside the product so on this hand um because the line we're doing a mirrored illusion is what we generally do with designs oh and i want to address my mom's thumbs because it's a cute little quirky thing she does so she likes her thumbs i'm against thumbs needing to be cute because they're way over there they're not in the picture so she kind of did her thumbs opposite of the rest of the hand of fingers if you notice so this is our final look i finished with flat mat um as my final step went ahead and wiped off the tacky layer applies the, applied the le cuticle oil and this is it doesn't that white line kind of look like a light line put it down below is there like a sweater emoji what's a good emoji for this let's put i don't know let's let's put a purple emoji i don't know guys somebody just tell uh, everybody else what the emoji is somebody try to find the best emoji for this set um thank you guys for watching don't forget to thumbs up subscribe and check out light elegance for all these products you've seen here thank you guys for watching so much don't forget to put that emoji all right bye